Welcome to SAT TV News. I am Larry LaRocky, your presenter. Among the major developments, Pebush Primary in Squirrel Spelling Bee competition. Media report of students' death in Grenada sparks complaint and lawsuit threat. Delhi Tornado strikes Texas town of Granbury. And in sports, Sibuli Development Committee hosts successful 4 km marathon. Details of these will follow. Wherever the iron play, I'll be there. Wherever the steel band play, I'll be there. Anytime it's carnival, yo, festival, bacchanal, behind the big truck, down the road, everybody, they know that I'll be there. Yo, this is Mr. Challenge, you're watching Sat TV, the people's choice. Welcome back. Monday, May 15th, mark the official start of the activities for the Warner Village Feast, under the theme, Promoting Community Togetherness to Achieve Community Development, with a panel discussion at the Warner Primary School. Honorable Reverend Bachmore said there was a good turnout of villagers, although he would have liked to see more men, as the recurring question is often, are we playing our role as men in society? Mr. Blackmore shared with the crowd a story of a past university friend whose parents had invested money in him in an effort to point out the difference in the way Dominicans and other nationals think. His parents had already invested in over a million dollars worth of mutual funds. So at the age of 23, he was already a millionaire. We, on the other hand, do not believe in insurance. We believe that if you die tomorrow, that some other person will come and enjoy a house with our wife. We should be happy if we pass on that our loved ones are happy and do not have to think of any legacy of death. We had to work hard as black and poor people because our parents never had the resources to invest in us. We know are more advanced. We cannot let our young people down and our children down. According to the parliamentary representative, we should address the issues that are important in order to work against poverty. We should not leave the burden to the state. It has to be our obligation to take care of our grandparents, parents, and children. He applauded the committee's effort and says as a measure to facilitate community development and involvement, he is looking to secure resource centers for the village of Campbell and Warner. To facilitate community development and involvement, we require you have a proper place to meet. That is why I've been talking about resource centers for Campbell and Warner. That is my role. I can do it, but I cannot come and force you to come to meetings in the resource center. Further, we are now embarking on a project. We're starting in Campbell very soon. We're going to ensure that every household is equipped with a toilet and washroom facility. In closing, he stated, in 2013, we must push to depart from public conveniences and ensure that there is a toilet and bathroom in each home. The panel consisted of Pastor Martin Douglas from the Christ Gospel Church, Thomas Holmes, educator and president of Caribbean, Caribbean Mill Action Network, Inspector Claude Wicks, moderator, and Inspector Michael Luda. All our homes have become very weak and the enemy of our soul uh, find it very easy to destroy our families because of the absence of our male figures, namely our fathers, our uncles, etc. And we lose our families as it's been destroyed by the spirit of divorce, rebellion, addictions, molestation, child abuse, criminality, deviance, and the list, go, the list goes on. In an interactive session which the villagers participated in, the panelists answered a series of questions get at making the absence of men in society clearer. Young women who are educated do not want boys who are not educated. 
I wish that was really true, you know. Because that will really help the young men to be responsible. Go out and then think twice. Go up to the prisons and let me know the number of ladies you see in the prison compared to the number of men. And go to church. When you're done with that, go to church and see how many young men in church compared to the ladies. Pastor Martin Douglas says he believes as young men, they need to get back to having a relationship with God. He says that if young men were to be asked what their purpose is, very few would have an answer. And through our union, through prayer, and through the reading of God's word, and, and coming to church, men, we're able to discover our true purpose, why God created us. If you ask the average man, young man today, old, what is your purpose in life? Why were you created? Why did God give you the mind that he gave you? Very few would answer. I know what my purpose is. Our purpose in life, why God created us, was to that he would reveal his name to us, his nature, his love, his character. And as we learn and we, we appreciate his character, then we become conduits of his character and his nature to others. In other stories, we are not in the business of just selling products. We are in the business of educating and promoting healthy lifestyles which begins with sensitizing the public on the real meaning of health means wealth. If you are healthy, you can be considered rich. This was according to Mr. Carlton Lando, pharmacist and medical representative of Jolly's Pharmacy, speaking at what they dubbed Blood Pressure Screening Day, held on Thursday, May 16th. We are synonymous with healthcare, and, and when we say healthcare, we're looking at pre preventative, promotive, and educative. So we concentrate on those three aspects of healthcare. One of three things that we've embarked on. One, um, for me as the liaison officer, of medical person, medical uh, representative for Jolly's, I liaise with the doctors, I really liaise with health centers, and um, basically sensitize them on what we're doing. And be, making Jolly's be a part of the whole preventative and health promotion aspect. We've embarked on our newsletter, um, we have a uh, ready okay, so we have yeah. embarked on our newsletter, which is a, a monthly publication yeah. where we focus on a medical condition or medical issue. And the customer is free of charge to the customer, and it's on both our locations. And so people can get those literature and read them. We've also embarked on our journal TV, which we, we should be airing this the next month, which is going to be like in the form of a, of a YouTube video whereby we'll be focusing on very private conditions that often people don't want to talk about, or almost embarrassing conditions. I think our first publication was on, on um, importance. These initiatives indicate their serious interest in the general health of Dominicans as a healthy population leads to a productive country, noted Mr. Lando. He mentioned that another objective of this activity was to sensitize the public on the importance of keeping their blood pressure at a normal level. This is 120 over 80. The prevalence of communicable diseases such as high blood pressure, diabetes, heart failure and cancer is alarming, said Mr. Lando. It is something that we will definitely be continuing. Well, however, we will be focusing on other areas, not just blood pressure, but we'll be focusing on diabetes, we'll be focusing on sports medicine, we'll be focusing on nutrition and fitness, we'll be focusing on a wide variety. He noted, the pharmaceutical companies are not engaged in any battle with the herbalists. Rather, they work alongside them and also sell a wide variety of herbal products. The, the, the difference is that all herbal preparations, they go through a process whereby they are quantified, they are assessed, and the right quantity and quality is, is um, written on them, and so then the customer gets a better gauge as to how to use those herbal preparations. So, whereas the herbalist normally will have things in portions, and then sometimes the, even the, 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 the amount is not, is not necessarily accurate, and which can potentiate, um, you know, problems for, for existing people. Um, we have a good relationship with Herbalists. I mean, I know from Telugu that they've, 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 they've fought against, but you know what's amazing? The Herbalists themselves, when they do find themselves in dire straits, 
they, they refer to synthetic medicine. And sometimes that's how it is, you know? I mean, people have a choice. Yeah. We all listen to people that you have a choice. He went on to say, we must not mix herbal and pharmaceutical drugs as this practice puts our bodies at risk. Assistant manager of Jolly's Pharmacy, Mr. Oren Jolly, noted this activity was another way of extending their services to not just their customers but also the general public. You know, we're just warming up and we have <laughs> plenty more services in the pipeline that we're hoping to provide in the near future. Um, this is the start but um, our patients and our customers can definitely expect more services to come along as we ramp up to the events that we plan. Mr. Jolly said they are working on improving healthcare in Dominica and for them it is not just business as usual. He is urging Dominicans to ensure they diet and exercise properly so they will maintain a good healthy lifestyle and will not have to rely on pharmaceutical drugs. In other stories, sports commentator Mr. Joseph Thomas is of the view that the media center at the Windsor Park Stadium should be named after radio pioneer Mr. Jefferson Charles. He managed DBS Radio. He was the first manager of Radio Dominica, as it was then called, and then moved on to um, England. He was the first overseas Caribbean national to be afforded a contract to work with the BBC Caribbean. Uh, and apart from that, too, Jeff has brought many a cheer to Dominicans and I say Caribbean people as far as his commentary is concerned. He's really um, worked magic, you know, in that area, in that field. So it is only fitting, I think, that the media center be named after him. Um, it bears the name of Jefferson Charles and the authorities, I think, would be good to move very quickly in that direction, lest we forget. Mr. Thomas also shared his opinion on the recognition and awards given to forgotten sportsmen of Dominica, Mr. Cecil Larock and Mr. Reginald St. Heavy Shillingford by the Dominica Olympic Committee, DOC. I think it's quite fitting. I think the Dominica Olympic Committee has done a pretty decent job. I would have liked to see, though, the Cricket Association and the Football Association take the lead in that direction. As it were, it was not to be, and the Dominica Olympic Committee did that. I would have also liked to see one other name added to that premier list, and that is the name of Cuthbert Williams. Cuthbert Williams, who played cricket, football, and basketball for Dominica. Um, the Dominica Olympic Committee has said that um, they will um, make this a continuous exercise, so hopefully the next time around or next year, we will have the name of Cuthbert Williams coming to the fore. And of course, there are many others, many others who have um, you know, done well at the highest level of sport here in Dominica, um, receiving their recognition. Mr. Thomas added, what he would like to see are changes in the attitude of sports administrators who think everything is all about them and not the athletes. These individuals, he said, should seek to replicate what the Dominica Olympic Committee did when they held a special ceremony to honor two deserving individuals who excelled in their field of sports for Dominica. This needs to be repeated by all sports associations on a regular basis, he concluded. On Wednesday, May 15th, the third annual primary school's Creole Spelling Bee competition was held at the Arawak House of Culture. The event organized by the National Cultural Council and the Division of Culture in collaboration with the Comité Pu Itad Creole KEK formed part of the Domfesta program of activities an event that focuses on Creole literacy. I congratulate the students for winning competitions at their schools and district levels, and would like to encourage you to continue to learn the Creole language and embrace it, because it is, after all, our native language. Mrs. Charlene White Christian, representative for Mr. Stevenson Hyacinth, Chief Education Officer said, the Creole heritage of Dominica needs to be preserved and one of the ways to doing so is through the primary school competition. She said the competition allows for the learning of the Creole language and hopes that it will be preserved and in the near future be taught at the schools as part of the national curriculum. Aye, nothing. Aye. Aye. A Y E N. Aye. Oh, correct. Zuti, 
A stinging nettle. Zooty. Zooty. Z O U T I. Zooty. Correct. Vat. Stomach. Vat. Vat. V A N T. Vat. Correct. Sui, mouse, sui. Sui, S O U W I, sui. Correct. Mrs. Christian concluded by saying language is the roadmap of culture and tells you where its people came from and where they are going. At the competition, there was a tiebreaker between the Pebush and the Delicis Primary School. However, ultimately, Naira Remy of the Pebush Primary School emerged winner. What way? Re enter. What way? What way? W A N T W E accent. What way? That's correct. Third place went to Alanda Ja of Mao Primary, and second place went to Anisha Williams of Delis Primary. Other participants were Nicole Vigilant of the Casabros Primary. Alcense Mafia of Tedmon Primary, Delbert Defoe of Seven Day Adventist Primary, Christian Thomas of Thibault Primary, Rebecca George of Collio Primary, Julia Cyril of Atkinson Primary, and Serena Alexander of Convent Prep. Pebush won the competition for the third time consecutively. No, I understand. Put your hands together for me. In more stories, the Evergreen Hotel launched their fringe event entitled Jazz and Pan Soiree on Wednesday, May 15th, leading up to Dominica's Jazz and Creole event scheduled for Sunday, May 19th at Cabritz in Portsmouth. Chief Executive Officer of the Discover Dominica Authority, DDA, Mr. Colin Piper says, this event will feature the fusion of jazz and Creole music in a family atmosphere to include local, regional, and international jazz artists. Uh, the event has been received well each year and last year. We had a significant bump, almost twice as many people, up to about 1,200 people at the Fort Shirley uh, in 2012. And so we hope that that grows a little more this year. Uh, and of course, they appreciated the inviting and casual ambience of one of Dominica's major tourism attractions. And this year, Jazz and Creole will be staged on May 19th. Um, last year we attempted to introduce some fringe events and this year um, have done it in a little more organized fashion and so we're very pleased that the Evergreen Hotel has agreed to partner with us and other sponsors to uh, kick off this year's Jazz and Creole Fringe events. Mr. Piper listed some of the other events planned. After that on Friday we'll be moving about a mile down the road to uh, Fort Young Hotel where they'll have their happy hour at which point in time you'll be able to see a cameo appearance by Eric Ildefonce Quartet featuring Luther Francois from uh, St. Lucia and then we move to Bells uh, on Saturday to the Riverstone Bar and Grill where we will uh, witness uh, Breathe, a local act that, um, that has been making some waves as of late and then we move to main stage in Fort Shirley on Sunday, uh, where the lineup will be uh, phase five to intr introduce uh, the folks coming in. We will then have the Eric Ildefonce Quartet. We will have the uh, local female singers uh, uh, singing some jazz standards and some originals, uh, and then highlighted by Mikkel Henderson and then we move to Mr. Beethoven Obas uh, from Haiti by way of Belgium. We'll be playing with some musicians from the French West Indies, primarily uh, Guadeloupe I believe, might be Martinique. Uh, and then we have Mr. Monty Alexander who is a Jamaican by way of New York who will be coming in and um, headlining the event. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Mrs. Claudia Bellot, noted, Jazz and Creole is one of the signature events of Tourism Month during the month of May. 
We want to encourage all jazz lovers and those who are now beginning to appreciate this genre of music to participate and to come out and celebrate the activities, the fringe activities, and also the main stage activity on Sunday. We also want to encourage you to participate fully as we continue with Tourism Awareness Month. The Ministry of Tourism is ensuring that as we go through the months of the year, during the summer months, when our um, visitation is not as high as the other months, that we begin to introduce new events which will attract more visitors to Dominica. As we continue to organize events such as this, we are very hopeful that they will begin to contribute to their target of 90,000 visitors by 2015, says Mrs. Bellot. Head of Marketing of the DDA, Mrs. Nikki Maroye John Baptist, encourages all Dominicans to make the time to patronize the fringe events and the main event, Jazz and Creole, on Sunday, May 19th at Cabrit in Portsmouth. <laughs> This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights. Have you ever wanted to order on the internet but don't own a credit card? Or you're just fed up of the high prices of items locally? Well, the solution is Kemet's Online Services. Kemet's Online Services. Order a wide variety of items and get your items in as quick as 5 to 10 days. For placing orders or for more information, call 614-9550. The sky's the limit with Kemet's Online Services.